What if I told you there's a ghost town in the mountains of Western North Carolina? Not just any ghost town, but one that is submerged at the bottom of a huge lake. There is. It's true. Not only that, there's a train that carries tourists, passengers, over that lake, over the ruins of that ghost town every single day. My dad and I took that train, we took that trip, and I'm headed to his condo right now to talk about it. And I'm gonna show you some footage from the train ride. Another beautiful day on Greenville's east side. It is beautiful. This is what they call Chamber of Commerce weather. I agree totally. It's wonderful. We were just talking to one of your neighbors and he said you're the mayor here. Is that right? <laughs> That's what they call me. I have my own little town, I guess. Or is this a village? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, but seriously, you are on the, on the HOA board, HOA right? HOA board, yes. Yeah. I think anybody that knows you, if I were to tell them, yeah, my dad's on the HOA board, they would be like, well, yeah, we saw that coming. Yeah, <laughs> we could see that coming a mile away. I enjoy being the mayor. I waited a long time for this honor. Remember when I came over at Christmas time? I do. And you had some Christmas decorations out this year. You don't always oh, do that. Oh, it was you, special. You had some trains set up, and I—I I, I love trains. Yeah, I took some some yeah. pictures and some video of the trains. Yeah, and, I had six. Yeah, I had six trains. Is there any? Are there any uh, special stories behind any of those? Or well, one like of it. them was a Bachman train. And that makes it special. They originated over in Germany, and they still make them there. Too bad we don't get a financial cut of any of that. It, uh, maybe we're late working on that. We, we should have started yeah. sooner. Right. <laughs> Well, hey, listen, I told the, the folks at home, the viewers, yes. that we're going to be talking about a train trip that we took up to uh, Fontana Lake, Nantahala wow. Gorge, My Bryson way. City. Yes. Let's just start by you giving me your impressions of Bryson City. What did you think about that little, little mountain town? Yeah, it's a little mountain town. Uh, but they they have tourists in mind. Uh, I think I had my picture made with a big old bear out on the sidewalk. I but think so. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, yeah, it, uh, it it's it's a, a fine little place, and they've taken advantage of their opportunities. It could be just worth the trip to go up there, and because it was so peaceful, that's what really fascinated me was how relaxed and how peaceful and how enjoyable it could be to experience that because, you know, our, our lives are just so fast moving now and it's nice to find an area that's peaceful. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was fun. Well, I tell you what, why don't we just go inside? Let's go in the house and finish talking about this and also show people some actual video from the trip that we took. That would be awesome. So we've already kind of talked about how Bryson City, North Carolina is sort of the hub, the jumping off point for the Great Smoky Mountain Railroad. Mm -hmm. And I noticed online that it said the Smithsonian has named Bryson City one of the 20 best small towns to visit. I now, can believe that. I gotta believe the railroad is a big reason why. Because well, I would think so, but 
Bryson City is nice just of itself. It and, is. And the people. I, I really enjoyed meeting the people in Bryson City area. Yeah. The population uh, there is only about 1,500 people, 1,558. We may have talked to most of them. Right. <laughs> and only 1,558 live there full-time year-round, and uh, the, the whole town only encompasses a little over two square miles, so it's not very large. No. But there's no. always a lot happening there. Yeah. They really specialize in tourism, and they do it upright. One person, you know, I like to kind of dig around and see if I can find out if there are famous people from the cities that I visit. Right. Heath Schuler is from Bryson City. Wow. He was the starting quarterback for the Tennessee Volunteers yeah. football team for a while. We don't always talk about them. We don't. We try to put them out of our mind, but I got to give him his due. He was the SEC Player of the Year in 1993, and he came in second for the Heisman Trophy and was drafted by the Washington Redskins. That's phenomenal, really. That's right. That um, was quite... A a career but that's not all after he played football I guess he did not get so many concussions that he couldn't think straight because he went into politics oh wait maybe wait a minute maybe I he think went, there's a connection there maybe he went into politics because he couldn't think straight but that that, that would make <laughs> sense my handy dandy notes say that uh, Bryson City is located in what was historically the land of the Cherokee Indians yes that's right your mother was a Cherokee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She was one quarter hard. Yeah. She was. If she would, if, if my mother was a full-blown Indian, I think I would have noticed. What I remember hearing is that her grandmother was a full-blooded Cherokee That's right. Indian. That's is that right. true? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and take a look back through the modern miracle of video at this particular train ride. What do you say? That'd be beautiful, because it was a, a beautiful ride. Keep on holding. Keep on holding. Holding out hope for me. Keep on holding. Keep on holding. Keep on holding.
So this particular train, they call it the Nantahala Gorge Excursion because it leaves Bryson City, travels along the Nantahala River, and Nantahala is a Cherokee word that means land of the noonday sun. So it also passes over something called Fontana Lake. We'll talk about that in just a second. That's some lake. That is. But it was a four and a half hour train excursion that travels 44 miles to the Nantahala Gorge and back. There is a historic trellis bridge that took us over Fontana Lake. And the yeah. layover, now all of these train trips go somewhere and stop. Right. And usually you have about half an hour. Yes. Or 45 minutes to just enjoy. Right. It's kind of like being, did you ever go on a cruise? You've been on cruises, I've right? I've been on four. So it's kind of like being on a cruise where you have yeah layovers and excursions and you can right. go visit the island or do something fun right swim with the dolphins go parasailing whatever well these train trips are very similar but it's just a more compressed window of time you just have like i said about 45 minutes or so to enjoy something in this particular case it was just some nice water and and the nantahalo river and it was the outfitting area where they got you ready to go if you wanted to go rafting or kayaking okay. yeah. or canoeing. Yeah. This was the yeah. area where people would go and get their life preservers and their river rafts and all that stuff. So of all the train trips that we've been on so far, this was my least favorite layover because there just wasn't really that much to do except just kind of look at the water and walk over a bridge. But the train ride itself was really nice. Because, you remember the car that we were in? Oh, we, beautiful. Is that the one that we had that delicious meal? Yes. Oh, that was good. Yes. Now, of the four trains that we've been on, this one gets the top grade for the food. And, speaking of food... They gave us a free tumbler. Yes, beautiful. Great, Look at that. Great Smoky Mountains Railroad and free souvenir souvenir there. But yeah, the uh, the dinner was amazing. It and, was. And the train car was, was really beautiful. nice. Totally. It just seemed like it may have been from the 1940s. And it was totally redone. It was beautiful. But I liked the people, too. They, they were really nice. Yeah, in fact, the lady that served sort of as our, our tour guide, if you will, uh, she told us about the controversy. There is some controversy surrounding this particular area and this particular train. And I'll just share from my notes here that um, the train does travel across Fontana Lake, a reservoir impounded by the Fontana Dam. The lake is about 17 miles long. It's an, a lake of over 10,000 acres. Big. It's, it's big. Uh, it has an average depth of 135 feet, reaches a maximum depth of 440 feet, making I, it... I knew it was deep, but that is really deep. My word. It's the deepest lake in North Carolina. Oh. Which is a good thing. Yeah since there are entire towns buried under the water beneath it. <laughs> so, let's talk about that. The towns of Proctor and Judson, most notably, were completely submerged when the lake was formed. And here's what happened. The people of these little towns were told by the government and the TVA, Tennessee Valley Authority, I think, which was created by Franklin Roosevelt as part of the New Deal that a dam, they were told that a dam was needed to supply electricity to the area. But it was also going to be used <laughs> for something else. Yes, it was. To support the aluminum mm -hmm. industry at the height of World War II and provide power for a closely guarded secret project over at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, namely yep. the creation 
of the atomic weapon. Yes. Oak yep. Ridge, a facility that processed yep. highly enriched uranium, was part of the Manhattan Project. And so mm -hmm. they needed to create this lake. They needed to build a dam as it was all part of that. Some 2,311 families and 2,043 graves had to be relocated out of the project area. And the towns of Fontana, Bushnell, Forney, and Judson were completely lost to the formation oh, of four, Fontana Lake. Four communities. Yes. Wow. In the end, 1,064 tracts of land were acquired at an average sum of $37.76 per acre. Lord have mercy. $37 an what acre. What would it be today? One man said, quote, the TVA appraised the land, setting the price at the lowest level possible and allowed no bargaining. Mm. Stories persist to this day of how some local people still harbor some bitterness toward the TVA. As a result of this thing, for some, there's a general distrust of government overall that has spanned generations. I can understand that. In Tennessee. Fontana Dam was completed at a cost of over $70 million, equivalent to $935 million in today's dollars. It's a lot of money. But you know what? Makes, it, what? It makes a lot of electricity. Yes, and it's a beautiful lake. It is. And a today... A lot, lot of recreation. We saw... Oh, boats and... Boating, people skiing. Mm -hmm. um, People really do enjoy it. They uh, do. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. The train goes over the lake yeah. multiple times a day. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it is what it is. Things happen. Um, you yeah. know, yep. History they call is that, what it is. They call that progress. But I don't think the families that only got $37 an acre would call that progress, but no. that's that's history now. That's history. Well, we've pretty much reached the end of the video, and um, it's time for you to let us know, like on a scale of one to five, how would you rate this particular train excursion, which is, what is it, the Nan Nantahala Gorge excursion of the Great Smoky Mountains Railroad. What do you say? Taking everything into consideration. Including the mashed potatoes. <laughs> that was so good. I'm going to say it's a four. Four stars for the Nantahala Gorge excursion. Hey, you know what? Just before we go, um, I, I brought a gift this time. Oh, did you? Thank you. For, Wonderful. For being my guest here on... Joyful Trains, we'll call it Joyful Trains this, you know, instead of Joyful Trails yeah, this yeah. week. But for being my special guest, I brought you your very own bag of oh. Bucky's Sea Salted Caramel Beaver Nuggets. Oh, How about no, that? from Bucky's. How about that? Bucky's, that is one of the most unusual places in the whole world. You've been to a Bucky's before, right? Yes, I have. Yeah, it's like the Disney World of gas stations or something? It, it is. 125 <laughs> pumps. Right. I will eat these with a pure delight. You will, because I've had that flavor. And they're amazing. You haven't eaten any out of here, have you? I never remember to call It's beaver nuggets. I always want to call them beaver, <laughs> beaver nuts or beaver pellets or... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think you can call them anything you want. Just don't eat mine. Right. Okay. <laughs> those are so good. I, I kind of want to just be around to watch you when you bite into those things. And just to They're see so good. the pure joy that's going to be all over you when you... Oh, eat. man. <laughs> Thank you. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>